yes we are on live Yeah, it is a two minutes still remaining. We will be shortly starting. Uh, yes, Pratishta, you can start now. Your stage is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Krishna. Pratishta, please, Hello, could you please everybody. increase your volume? Yes, sure. Pratishta, we could not see you, I think. Uh, okay, just a minute. Can yeah, it is me? okay. It is okay. We are we are seeing. Yeah, yeah lighting okay. is there. We can I see you right now. Yes. Okay. Right. I hope I'm audible now. Yes. Yes. Yes, very much. Okay, yeah, okay. could you please speak a good uh, a bit louder? Yes, sure, sure, sure. Now am I audible? Very much audible. Yes, okay, yes. Okay, okay. Very much audible. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you can that's, start now. The we are on live. Right. That's great to hear. Welcome everyone. Good morning, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. I am pleased to welcome you to the webinar on genomic selection of crops. In this virtual conference room, I see such amazing guests and dignitaries from around the world sharing the same interest and enlightening one another with the advancing in the field of agriculture. I am sure we are also reaching out to many new practitioners, technologists, innovators, business professionals, and civil society representatives, fellow mates and many more people. A warm welcome to you all. I'm sure we all understand the importance of science, technology, and innovation in our day-to-day -day lives and the ways in which they are transforming the world. If this was not clear earlier, it is blindingly obvious now, alongside the intricacies arising with the R at hand, science, technology, and innovation are indispensable for our response to and upliftment from the current and the forthcoming scenarios. Equally important is deployment of scientific inventions, innovations, and technological solutions on a scale that will reach their target audience. So why here? Why today? What is the purpose? We're all embraced by the presence of the distinguished and well-rounded dignitaries to shed some light upon the varied measures to be taken under consideration for the distinct genomes and the selection of crops based onto the same. All our online webinars aim to discuss leading edge technologies and recent scientific developments in addition to the immediate challenges in agriculture and allied sectors. The idea is to familiarize students and professionals about current research trends, relevant and pioneering technologies in plant genomics for high level analysis and interdisciplinary areas that are embraced in leading laboratories by the excelling scientists. Plant Genomia is a nonprofit organization promoting and publicizing genome sciences and investigations in the field of agriculture across the globe. We organize various webinars and developments comprehending genome research in plants for all the students, researchers, industrialists, and professors internationally. Here at Plant Genomia, we hold a global team of reputed scientists and research scholars from various parts of the world, distinct states of India, the United States of America, United Kingdom, Nigeria, Philippines, and Spain, etc. The technical support is laid to us by the scholars from the Department of Genetics and Plant Breeding. Our motto is to disseminate every bit of knowledge among all. We believe that no research is accomplished until broadcasted 
and that is an ongoing process through layers and lapses of time i would also like to extend my heartiest welcome to the senior dignitaries respected chief guest dr k v peter our speaker today dr bernardo orders the valued panelists who have joined us the core subject specialist team the core support team our esteemed founder mr alamuru krishna chaitanya and the lovely audience before we begin the inaugural ceremony i would like to introduce our revered chief guest professor dr k v peter phd post doctorate usda bellsville usa former vice chancellor kau president indian society of vegetable science varanasi president kerala region national academy of sciences prayagraj sir has also attained numerous renowned fellowships welcome sir we are all humbled to have your dignified presence here with us today thank you thank you thank you sir light is a symbol of brightness and prosperity as sunlight expels the darkness of night similarly blessings bring in our life prosperity and happiness food and light the two essentialities bestowed upon us to make life out of it to make this event a blessed one as the tradition goes let's invoke goddess saraswati by kindling the lamp of knowledge and wisdom for seeking the choicest blessing i invite our honorable chief guest dr k v peter for the inaugural ceremony of virtually lighting the lamp i will share the virtual lighting screen of the lamp one minute Yes. 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 One minute. thank you very much sir thanks a lot much gratitude to you such an enchanting moment i can feel the energy uplift now that we are all ready to move ahead i would like to call upon the admirable chief guest dr k v peter to voice out his views can you please have you sir thank you thank, thank you thank you uh, most uh, uh, respected founder of planned genomia a platform for communication of science thiru alamuru krishna chaitanya very renowned and respected speaker dr bernardo ordas from spain my friend dr arun kumar the council for science and industrial research scientist palambo himachal pradesh where my professor professor v l chopra a geneticist internationally god has taken him from us and uh, very informed very dedicated fellow scientists colleagues and my dear friends it is a matter of immense pleasure 
that I am able to see you, able to talk to you at this period of COVID. The technology has become so advanced, the technology has become so friendly, the technologies have become so economical that you are able to hold such international meetings where you attend from home. So, genomic research is not an exception. It is also becoming very cost effective. This latest CRISPR technology, CRIPSR, we have a detailed chapter on this in a book called Genetic Engineering in Horticultural Crops. I think uh, for uh, scientists from outside the country, outside India, in India, horticulture, we take into consideration fruits, very important, nutritionally, vegetables, very important, tuber crops, carbohydrate, spices, India is known as the land of spices, beautiful spices, king of spices, queen of spices, pepper, cardamom, and so and so forth. Ornamental plants, floriculture, ornamental plants, then processing. These all these engumbas into a single group, which we call horticultural sciences. Now, of course, it has become vegetable science and fruit science and so and so forth. So in the book by Professor Rout, R-O-U-T, Rout, he is a professor of biotechnology in O-U-A-T, Bhuvaneshwar in Odisha. In that book, uh, uh, Genetic Engineering, published by Academic Press, Elsevier, uh, this aspect alone, CRIPSR, that is the latest technology, is being elaborated. This, of course, was published about uh, four years back. So it means uh, four years back, all these are in a very advanced stage. And my dear friends, you doubt definitely, because I am going to concentrate mostly on vegetables in this inauguration. Why I concentrate? India is in a very, not in a comfortable state as far as health of the individuals are concerned. Malnutrition, which Professor Swaminathan says, hidden hunger. Hidden hunger is malnutrition. We have anemia. Our uh, ladies, you know, anemia, kids, standard growth, low birth weight, and then high mortality, and so and so forth. It is a very, not a, a positive indication. So vegetables have an important role to play, and nutritionally rich vegetables. So there, biofortification is coming into a big way. You have biofortified vegetables now. Of course, there are certain ethical aspects which are being debated. That is debated by convenient people. But Bangladesh grows wheat brinjal. It is a little sorry state that we were unable to convince. I will find the fault with the scientists only. <laughs> to convince the administrators and others that it is safe. It has nothing to do with body health and so and so forth. So you, you have this Bt brinjal and then mustard is coming, Bt cotton and so on and so forth. In vegetables when I come to that, you know, the tomatoes, the post-harvest losses of tomatoes alone, you should be surprised, some 40-45% post-harvest losses from the plant till it reaches the consumer. So if that itself can be saved biotechnologically, there are no genes now, N-O-R non-ripening gene, which is available, not costly, they are all available and there are called uh, tomato gene bank. Tomato gene bank, you tell uh, any sort of character, a gene is a character and any character you, uh, you mention, you want to incorporate, you want to incorporate red color, you want to incorporate more lycopene, you want to incorporate more vitamin C and uh, like that uh, you have genes for it and there are technologies how to transfer all these things. In my note, I'm, that is why I will not take much time, 
In my note of message, I have indicated how Gandhiji has mentioned, foreseen all this. Gandhiji, a, which we call, which uh, African or uh, South, South Africa, he was called a naked fakir. <laughs> illiterate, but he is more illiterate than all of us. He has uh, mentioned a, a very important point. I will quote only that. There can be no rule of God. There can be no rule of God in the present state of iniquities, inequalities in which a few roll in riches and the masses do not get enough to eat. Do not get enough to eat. So that is a, a very uh, and, uh, statement which we feel uh, very uh, uncomfortable, Gandhiji's statement. Then again, in a world of plenty, not no one, not even a single person should go hungry. But almost one billion still do not have enough to eat. I want to see an end to hunger everywhere within my lifetime. Ban Ki-moon, former Secretary General UN. So these are all certain facts and things. But I am very happy that a platform is being created and appropriately called. I am very happy. Actually, we have to give an award to the fellow who has named it. Planned Genomics. Genomia. Planned Genomia. It's a platform uh, which provides opportunity for scientists to attend, to deliberate, to discuss, then to compile uh, the information on, uh, to start with, plant genomics. I wish uh, the organizers, I wish the board, and I wish all those who are involved in this a very grand success. And my only request is, uh, these things kindly go through it, what uh, we have noted down, because it will be a duplicate work for me <laughs> if I start reading all this. Kindly go through it. And uh, I have extreme pleasure with the blessing of Alamuru Krishna Chaitanya, who is the founder. A for, a, you know, he, is a, he has seen it, what is to happen and what we should do it. Uh, uh, so that uh, this particular uh, communication, this is basically a communication, science communication. There are many, but here it is a, a zero, uh, you know, for the, for the, so I have, I, I feel only my time, of course time is precious, time is valuable, but still I have not uh, made any financial contribution to attend and uh, deliberate and hear uh, these uh, excellent uh, informative things of the present and future, not the not the past, the present and future. That is what we are interested in. I inaugurate this program formally with your permission. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks a lot for appraising us with such sagacious knowledge and insight, for accepting our invitation and being a part of this event. It has been a stupendous commencement. Thanks to you, sir. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Sable, scientist from the background of horticulture, also an integral part of the subject specialist team, to comment upon plant genomia. Thank you, madam. Am I, uh, am I audible, madam? Yes, yes, very, yes for yes, me, yes. clear. Okay, okay. So, have a good day and welcome uh, all in the today's uh, international webinar. Uh, in some uh, the part of introduction, I Dr. Pratik Sable, working as uh, assistant professor in the Department of Horticulture, Sardar Krishnagar Dantewada Agriculture University, Gujarat. It's a very nice session uh, by Honorable Dr. K. V. Peter, sir. I uh, thanks very much. I welcome. And uh, it's a, uh, one pleasure to me, Dr. K. V. Peter, sir, has written uh, one beautiful uh, uh, forward of my uh, uh, books. Uh, very thanks, sir. And as a part of today's uh, program, the responsibilities is given to me that uh, we have to uh, say some few regards regarding the plant genomia. As we uh, all know, uh, that uh, uh, agriculture production and horticulture production has been increased by developing improved varieties and hybrids.
by various agriculture universities icr institutes and etc or a local street and variety though variety uh, various methods of crop improvement uh, in the breed as a breeding methods are well known but there are some shortfalls are found in the knowledge dissemination and idea exchange especially in a genomics plants with respect to transgenics so it is needs dissemination of ideas with respect to genome selection transgenics marker selection for plant disease resistance that means biotic and biotic stress management to increase the yield and to fulfill the nation's demands and again to increase the farmers incomes that means new techno concept is their farmer doubling farmers income and one more important thing that plant genome is a very good platform founded by mr ak chaitanya i especially uh, put up my special welcome to chaitanya and i am feeling very proud that i have uh, guided chaitanya i know his innocent nature and his enthusiasm in the agriculture it's very proudful thing for me also that uh, paying as a students my students uh, uh, chaitanya then last but not least it's our great pleasure that we have dr k v peter sir with us as we known uh, all knows his eminent personality as a scientist national and international level welcome sir as a inaugural address uh, is a post he has done post doctorate u s d a uh, wells wine and all we knows that he works very enthusiastically and he very prominently as a ex vice chancellor kerala agriculture university director of central plantation crop research institute kerala and presidents now he's presidents of indian society of vegetable science varanasi so i welcome i very thanks to dr honorable kv peter sir <coughs> then very important today's international programs speaker renowned speaker dr varnando ordas research scientist spanish uh post doctoral research quantitative genetics university of edinburgh it's very proudful for us phd in plant breeding at university of vigo spain very 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 welcome sir as a panelist today's program dr arun kumar senior scientist csir institute of himalayan uh, by resource technology and he has his post doctorate at department of plant science mckl you know uh, university canada most welcome sir and it's our great pleasure privilege to share that dr kv peter sir and dr honorable uh, kp vishwanath sir honorable vice chancellor mpk v rauri has spared their uh, valuable time to write the uh, remarks and messages of our plant genomia platform it's very prestigious very worthy place very worthy uh, prestigious for us dr swaminathan sir has also the father of green uh, revolution has also uh, uh, acknowledge our uh, uh, platform last but not least i wish uh, i would like to uh, wish uh, put up my special thanks and wish to uh, the whole plant genome you know, teams and all the best and last but not least that uh, uh, today's uh, host uh, dr uh, uh, host team dr uh, pratishtha rupali and uh, dr uh, uh, one minute pratishtha okay so all the best thank you very much and once i would like to, to put up my special thanks because inviting me as a today's in a today's program thank you very much thank you best of luck and best of for your end overs thank you thank you very much sir thank you very much dr sable it was a remarkable address that he presented with remarkable particulars next we have the much admired
founder of Plant Genomia, Mr. Alamuru Krishna Chaitanya, to address the audiences and guests present with us today and to remark the initiative taken up by Plant Genomia and his team. I welcome everyone on behalf of entire Plant Genomia team. Thank you, Pratishtha Singh, for describing Plant Genomia, its mission, and everything about it. This platform is a place where all the research scholars, scientists, students, and industrialists can learn something about the genome research in agriculture. A country is usually believed to be social, political, and economically stable nation if the agriculture sector is very stable. And for stabilizing this, we, the people who are scientists, breeders, and everyone works at molecular level, which is at gene level. Promoting all the trends of research in molecular level, Plant Genomia has came out with a vibration of flying colors. I do remember the words of my professor, Dr. Sable sir and Professor S. N. Darandale, saying me that sharing is gaining and gaining is learning. So this is our basic motto and we all learn and let others learn from the eminent speakers across the globe through this virtual platform. Simply we can say that this Plant Genomia platform is connecting all the students, research scholars and scientists virtually. I once again thank all the students, research scholars, scientists from government, private and industries for registering this webinar through Plant Genomia and hope all will have a fruitful take away from this platform. I was very much delighted to say that Plant Genomia has received 5,800 plus registrations from 68 countries touching each and every continent almost. I also thank from core of my heart to Dr. K.V. Peter sir who is an eminent scientist for accepting our kind invitation for this inaugural in very less time. I profusely thank today's speaker, Dr. Bernardo Ordas and panelist, Dr. Arun Kumar wholeheartedly for accepting our invitation for today's talk. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chaitanya. Those were some very gripping words coming from you. While we are presenting a gesture of gratitude, I would also like to thank Dr. K.P. Vishwanathan Vice Chancellor of Mahatma Phule Krishi Vidya Peet, Rahuri, and Dr. K.V. Peter for giving their valuable forward message on Plant Genomia webinar. Moving further, we would like to express our indebtedness to our chief guest, Dr. K.V. Peter, for his inestimable presence. And now, as we subsequently proceed with the events, we would like to have you here with us, sir but time constraints are most obvious and understandable. And so we thank you again for your delightful appearance. Thank you for joining us today, sir. Thanks a lot. Now, I would like to hand over the panel to Dr. Rupali for the next event. Thank you, Pratista. And thank you everyone involved in Plan Genomia for giving me the opportunity to introduce our honorable speaker, Dr. Bernardo Ordis, for our special international webinar to enlighten us on genomic selection in crop plants, hosted under uh, Plant Genomia platform, a nonprofit organization promoting ge genome science and agriculture across the globe. Dr. Bernardo Ordis is presently a research scientist in Spanish National Research Council he completed his postdoctoral research in quantitative genetics from University of Edinburgh in 2005 and completed his doctorate research in biology in 2002 from University of Waco, Spain. Dr. Bernardo has tremendous and remarkable knowledge and expertise in plant breeding genetics and genomics. Dr. Bernardo's present research interests in general are breeding for crop adaptation and sustainability. He has employed local varieties to evaluate long-term pre-breeding programs with the application of genomic selection. Dr. Bernardo has interest in genetics and physiological studies of biomass and grain with special interest on senescence and nitrogen use efficiency. Dr. Bernardo has executed 27 research projects so far and has held collaboration with breeding companies. His research work and collaboration have resulted in numerous publications in highly cited and reputed journals. So welcome, Dr. Bernardo. Now I would like to request Tanushri to introduce our panelists. Over to you, Tanushri. Thank you, Rupali. Now I, I would like to welcome our honorable panelist of this session, Dr. Orun Kumar Boshak. 
Dr. Orun had his PhD in biotechnology from Council of Scientific and Industrial Research and Punjab University. After that, he joined in the University of Wisconsin Medicine as a postdoctoral fellow. He was awarded with prestigious Ramanujan Fellowship and joined in Punjab Agricultural University. He is currently working as a senior scientist in the Biotechnology Department, Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, Institute of Himalayan Bio, Bio Research Technology, Palampo. His research area extends in host pathogen interaction, functional genomics, protein engineering, and crop improvement. He has four patents and several research articles in reputed international journals. He is also associated with different international scientific societies like Potato Association of America, Molecular Plant Pathology Interactions, and so on. So welcome, Dr. Orun, and I would uh, now like to hand over this session to him. Thank you. Thank you, Tamshiri. And good morning to all my friends from India and abroad. First of all, I would like to take this opportunity to say thanks to organizations of or, organizers of this seminar series and also extend a very warm welcome to today's eminent speaker, Dr. Bernardo, today's chief guest, Professor K.B. Peter, distinguished scientists, research scholars, and students. Dr. Bernardo, you know, he's an eminent scientist who is working in the area of crop adaptation and sustainability. As we are aware that the global population is increasing at an exponential rate and climate change is happening at an alarming rate, we need some sustainable solutions to feed the world for the coming years. So Dr. Eduardo, uh, Dr. Bernardo, sorry, he will be sharing his views and research findings on some of the very important and interesting agricultural traits. Uh, one of the areas in which he's, he has contributed significantly is on the interrelationship between the senescence and the stay green phenotype in mage. Being a quantitative geneticist, he is using, he is using classical genetics as well as advanced genomic tools for understanding the complex traits and, and using the knowledge that is generated uh, for improving uh, the crops. So uh, now I would like to invite Dr. Bernardo to share his research findings to, with the August gathering. Professor Bernardo, please. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. Thank you very much to, to the organizer, to Venkata Rami Reddy. Um, I'm, I'm going, really it's an honor to be here with so eminent scientists. A beautiful words also for the first world was very, very beautiful. So I'm going to start. I, I, I need to, to share the, the screen. Yes, sir, you can share now. I was okay, yes. perfect. I'm going to introduce myself, although uh, there was an introduction, a very good introduction for the researchers, and I appreciate very much the, their words. I work in the Spanish National Research Council, that is the largest public institution dedicated to research in Spain, half different areas. I, I work in an institute that is the Mission Biológica de Galicia in, in northwestern Spain, was founded almost a century ago and was of the of the fair achievement was that the first hybrid produced and cultivated in Europe was was developed there. There was a long time ago. Okay. 
Uh, yes, my, my, I am the leader of a group working in crop adaptation and sustainability. I have uh, two main lines of, of, of research, genetic studies of traits relevant to adaptation and sustainability, exploitation of agricultural residuals, uh, nitrogenous use efficiency, uh, traits related to phenology that are very important to adaptation, in particular in the senescence, and the other line is your plants uh, in pre uh, with programs of pre-breeding. Uh, I'm going to explain in, in, in my talk these two, these two, these two, these two lines. Uh, first, uh, the genetic studies, and second, uh, the, the, the pre-breeding pre part. Sir, could you please share your slides? Uh, we are not able to see your slides. And you are not able? Yeah, could you please on the slides? Okay. You cannot see. No, sir. Uh, could you please otherwise uh, off the uh, screen sharing and can turn on again otherwise? You can see now. No, sir. You, you uh, the slide uh, PowerPoint is not at opening. Wow. I try again. Sir, you, you share know your what? entire screen. Like uh, you have to share your entire screen. Your I think you're sharing a single tab of it. Now? No. Yeah. Now you are seen. You are able to see. Yeah, it is clear. Yes, sir. yes, yes. It is clear. clear. Now I'm going to put in complete. Yes. Perfect. Now you can see now. Yeah, perfect. 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 Yeah. Okay. Now uh, the question was only not important the first uh, slides, so I'm going to continue. Uh, the, the, the cur one of the main problems that the, the humanity faces now, as is like in the past, is continue to be food security. The current rate of progress of yield is not enough to provide food to the expected population in 2050. I, I, I show here the, the, the figures of, of two papers showing that the right that in some regions the progress has stagnated. It's the, the, the graph has has not continued progress for some crops like rice, uh, wheat, maize. In in the case of maize, uh, here there is a global map. In orange there are the, the, the places with with the with the with the yield also has stopped, no continuity increasing. Uh, areas of Africa, uh, and Asia, Europe. Uh, the problem of food security can be exacerbated even for the climate change, particularly for the increased extreme weather events with extreme droughts and problems that are uh, already happening. Other problem, in addition to the to food uh, security, is the environmental pollution. Uh, the, the, the varieties that have it to be productive, but they also to be grown sustainable and cleanly. One of the main problems associated to agriculture. Sorry, you, you hear me oh, uh, fine? Yes, yes. Yes, okay, okay. The nitrogen fertilizer is one of the main problems of contamination uh, with eutrophization of water, uh, greenhouse uh, gases that are even more uh, damaged than CO2. Uh, in addition, there is other problem uh, that is not uh, related to, to agriculture that are uh, the problem of energy. The fossil fuels increase the CO2 in the atmosphere and they are not sustainable. We are not able to, to create uh, fossil fuels. Um, 
de, de agricultural residues can be clean and a sustainable cell stock for bioenergy because they don't compete with food. There are some places we are unable to, to, manage, to manage the residuals and burn them, what is really contaminated. And besides, they add, add value to the crop. The farmer can sell two products. In plant breeding, uh, the knowledge of the character of interest, the selection methods at the year plants, the knowledge of these things is key to obtain a continuous improvement, improvement of the yield. Uh, regarding the, the traits that are important in, in, in breeding, uh, can be classified in different ways. One way can be, for example, yield, stress tolerance and quality. All, all things converge to yield, that really the stress tolerance is uh, related to, to, to maintain the yield and the quality has no sense if there is no production at all. Many important also related to yield are the character related to adaptation. And the, maybe the most important or one of the most important factors in adaptation is the phenology of the crop. No. Synchronized crop development with the availability of resources that vary through the growing season. Uh, the crop phenology uh, can be uh, the cycle of, of the crops. I am going to, to put examples of, of maize because my experience was mainly with maize, is, uh, but in other uh, crops it's similar, uh, at least in our crop, of course, is time for sowing to flowering, the, the vegetative phase, and the, the other is the time for flowering to complete synesthesia including the senescence of leaves and green filling. There was a lot of studies uh, on, on flowering date and also less studies of senescence, but it's not so steady. So I focus more in senescence than in flowering. The, plants, the whole plant senescence involves changes in nutrient absorption, nutrient remobilization, the dismantling of the photosynthesis apparatus, and many other catabolic reactions, such as transport of molecular to things and so forth. It's really a complex process. There are uh, some studies in literature and also uh, in, 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 in the companies, it's a term used that is stay green. It's a general term given to variant in which senescence is the largest compiled with a standard reference genotype. Uh, there are uh, some classification of stay green in two main types, functional and non-functional of cosmetic. The functional is when the photosynthesis is active and the chlorophyll is, is, is there. So when it's green, it's doing the photosynthesis. The other type of stay green is when the, the, the chlorophyll is there, the, the, but there is no photosynthesis. Uh, there are a more complex classification in, in five types of, of senescence by, by Howard that give also two types that are interesting, the, the, the type A and the type B, that are two types of senescence that can be interest, distinguished for, for breeding. The first type is when there is a stay green because the initiation of the stay green is a light, although after that, uh, or happen at uh, normal rates. And the type B, the, the, the senescence, the initiation is at the same time that other genotype, but have a slower, a slower rate after that. Of course, there can be uh, types of combination of the two of them, and maybe uh, it's important to consider independently the two of them. The, the less senescence is important for the do double use, Great for feed and residual for energy uh, because influence the grain and residual yield, but also the moisture, also the association of the nitrogen. And understanding the relationship between these characters, different character and processes in senescence is key to, uh, to improving adaptation. So I started to study just the phenotypic variation for senescence. Uh, I evaluate 200 timber lines. Uh, I, I am going to, to explain my experience in temperate maize, in tropical maize 
maybe the main conclusion are the same, but it's other type of year plus. I'm going to focus in temperate. We, we select uh, lines of historical relevance and also some uh, private lines that with experience certificates. I want to, to thank you, the USDA that, that provide many of the lines and other bidders that also give me the lines for this study. Uh, I evaluate the, the inbred lines in for environments. And uh, I measure traits, physiological traits, photosynthesis, like the amount of CO2 interchange, the chlorophyll content, and the agronomical traits, uh, grain and receivable yield and moisture. I, I measure other traits, but these are the more relevant. Then I'm going to, to uh, I, I, the, the lines were grouped in four, uh, in four groups of, of flowering because I always take the senescent in relationship to the moment of, of flowering. So I have four groups. I am going to show the results here for the late group. The other have similar results. In this figure, the, the intensity of green color uh, reflects, it means more photosynthesis, more interchange of CO2. In the, in the right, uh, there is the here, the, the, the photosynthesis, the, the green color is doing the photosynthesis and, and the white color not photosynthesis at all, and it's uh, not much photosynthesis. Then there was some lines here in green color. This, each one of these, and each number is a different, different line. So, and these are the time from flowering. This zero means uh, flowering time. This is uh, 50 days after flowering, 60 days, 70 days, and 90 days after flowering. Uh, this group on the, on the right of the, of, the, of the slide, in green color, the names, have uh, photosynthesis active until even 75 days. 75 days, the photosynthesis was active and significant. We call those uh, lines as, as, as stay green. In the opposite, in the, in, the, in, the, in the left, these lines in the other part have not significant photosynthesis, 75 days. You can see the difference here. Have reduced photosynthesis even at seven, seven, uh, uh, and 60 days after, fl after flowering. You see the difference in color between the stay green and the non-stay green. There was also a group of, of line that was with intermediate behavior. Was not significant at 75 days, but had high photosynthesis at 60 days. At 60 days was similar to the stay green, but decreased very quickly in the senescence and was not the senescent at 75 days. Uh, really, I'm interested in, the, in that trade in relationship, of course, with agronomical trades. Then, here, I, I show the, the grain yield. These are the, the four groups of flowering. Early, middle, late, and very late. And these are the distribution of the three groups, the non-stay green, the intermediate, and the, and the stay green. In general, you see in, in, in the graph that uh, um, the, the group with late flowering have more, more yield, it's expected, except the very late flowering that was not adapted, was so late the flowering that was not able to, to complete the grain filling. And also, it's very clear uh, that the, 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 the stay green has more uh, yield than the nostri green for all groups. The intermediate have general uh, also more uh, yield than the nostri green types. And regarding the, the between the intermediate and the stay green type was similar in yield. The for biomass yield, the, 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 the yield of the residuals, the conclusion was similar. Higher, uh, more late flowering, higher yield, and late senescence, higher uh, yield also. With the moisture, the picture is similar. Uh, uh, late flowering, 
means uh, higher moisture and also higher uh, uh, longer senescence means also more moisture. This is for, for grain moisture and similar results occur for uh, biomass moisture. Always the, the, the senescence type have more moisture. So the main conclusions of, of this, that this, this work was that the duration of photosynthesis, the senescence, is a quantitative trace, is continuous, the readability is moderate or high, and regarding the trace, at the largest senescence uh, means higher grain yield and, and also higher residual yield, which is good, but have increased grain moisture and which is not good, and problems with recycling of nitrogen, what is also no good. Regarding the increasing of the moisture of the residual, that also is associated to the largest senescence, could be positive or negative, depending, depending on the, of the use, bioenergetic use of the residual. So, uh, I, I, I wanted to, to identify, localize the, the, the genes controlling the trait, to use in breeding, localize the, the genes in the genome and uh, quantify the effects. I started with one, one line, P, PSG39, have, have a light senescence compared to other standard line. Uh, and because also it's import, it was in, it's important in more than major plants. There are several lines derived from this that have also a senescence. So, in a principle, I expected to find a level of large effect. These results were, were already published. I use selective genotyping. I cross uh, the line, uh, stay green line, with a standard no stay green line. I use an F2 population of about uh, 500 individuals. I uh, phenotype all uh, individuals. I use for this a visual score two months after flowering. When I expect that some individuals uh, were uh, with senescence and order not, it's a critical moment to distinguish uh, the, 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 the individuals that have quick of, or late senescence. This is the visual score. I, I use a scale for one uh, completely dry to five uh, completely green, and the, the other values are intermediate between those values. I, uh, I phenotype all, all individuals, but I only genotype the, the tails of the distribution. The high tail with about 20 individuals and the low tail with about uh, 40 individuals. I use microsatellite markers, about 200 uh, markers. Uh, here in the table, I show uh, one uh, the, the significant markers. Um, I, I estimate in the high tail, the frequency uh, of the of the of the stay green allele, and I found that for for uh, markers in, in a region of chromosome one, in the in the high tail, the, the tail with the individuals with the higher stay green have a frequency you see, for example, of a 0 0.8. So <laughs> much more uh, a higher frequency of, of the of the stay green allele. In the low tail, that is with individuals that have not stay green, there is higher frequency of the of the no stay green allele. So these are the 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 the, the markers that show association with the trait. I calculate also the chlorophyll content. I, here I put the example of, of, of two of the significant markers. In this line that is broken are, are the homozygous for the nostalgic green allele and the continuous line, the, the homozygous for the for the stay green allele. This is one month. Until one month, uh, this is zero at flowering, one month at the flowering and two months at the flowering. Until one month at the flowering, the, the chlorophyll content is, is, is similar, but after that, the chlorophyll content decreases very quickly in the in the no green uh, homozygous but remains in the steering 
uh, homozygotes are, are expected. And I, I found something that I was very, very happy for that because I, I compared the distribution. Uh, the, this, uh, the, the BB uh, alleles are, that, uh, are the homozygotes that have low uh, chlorophyll content, have the, the, the no stay green allele and have low chlorophyll content. This is the distribution. And the, the, uh, the, the homozygotes for the stay green allele are the AA and have high uh, chlorophyll content. And the distribution only overlaps for one individual. So there are almost a perfect market that distinguishes between stay green and no stay green. So uh, I was very, but was only a F2 population. So uh, was only tested with comparing with a no stay green allele and was only tested in, in, in one environment. So I wanted to, to see if these results can be used in other, uh, with other line, in other uh, background, and in other environment to be really used in breeding. So I, I crossed the, the same stay green line with uh, a no stay green, other no stay green line. I, I phenotype much more individuals because I was quite optimistic about uh, the results and I tried to find more precision. I use the same methods. Uh, I use, uh, I, I, I uh, phenotype all individuals and use only the tails for genotyping. But the results were very disappointing for me. I detect uh, a Q tail, but it completely different uh, chromosome. So the, the results are not extrapolable because the design was S2. I cannot say if the works do it to other other, other back, genetic background or other uh, environment. So I need to, to study more. I, I need to have more powerful uh, designs. Before to continue with my, my studies in QTL analysis with other, with other designs, I use other, other technique that is very useful to, to study the senescence because really the senescence is a process in which uh, the the expression of the genes changes with time. So the RNA sec that study uh, that analyze that give us the amount or RNA of all genes simultaneously is a, a very powerful way to analyze the how the how uh, what genes are involved in senescence. I use for this analysis seven lines. The lines flowers, all line flower at the same time, but the senescence was in the, this N, NC292 was early, these two first lines are early senescence, middle senescence and late senescence. So have the same flowering, but different senescence. Here, I was uh, taking samples for the RNA, RNA sec analysis each for silking to, to, to each 15 days. You see in the early senescent lines, we could only take samples until 45 days, but in the, in the, in the late senescence until 90 days. You see the last difference between the lines, more than one more so different in senescence. Here are the, the phenotypic results. Uh, in, the, in the left, the, the, the figure of the, of the chlorophyll content. Uh, here, the, the, in the middle is the photosynthesis. The blue in color here is uh, the, the, the late senescence line that the, the chlorophyll uh, the, is, is, is the, we have a significant content of chlorophyll until 90, 90 days. The, with the photosynthesis, it's similar. We have photosynthesis significant until very late. And the, 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 the other lines, uh, the early lines, have um, very soon the chlorophyll uh, not significant. Uh, 
So these are the phenotypic data confirming our preliminary studies. Uh, we analyze the change of expression comparing with the flowering, which, which change, change the amount of, a, of RNA compared with the RNA at flowering. And we found uh, that there was about uh, 1,000 genes that was upregulated and about 500 uh, genes downregulated. And in the seven lines was the same genes. I, I named that these are called senescent genes because they are happening in all lines. On the opposite, we, we also find many genes that was specific for one line. We focus the study in the genes that was the core senescent genes that they, they, they were changing at senescence in the seven lines. These are figures showing the, the, the change of the number of genes that change expression at senescence, than regulation and upregulation. And the, the result was quite clear. This line here is the early senescence line, and there was an, in, a large increase of genes that change very early the expression. On the opposite, the, 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 the late senescence lines. Most of the genes remains with the same when the same amount of expression until 45 days, and then occurs the change. In the intermediate lines was between those lines, so was quite clear the, the results. With our regulation, is the same. These are the, the two uh, early lines yeah, compared with the late. The, the, the increase was the, the moment of large increase of expression was very different. We, we did a gene analysis and obtained a very significant uh, enrichment of photosynthesis genes, what is expected in down regulation. Uh, the, the photosynthesis is not needed, and many uh, the, genes, the, 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 the genes were down regulated. The result was different. Uh, we, in up regulation, uh, the, 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 was the catabolic process was, was genes uh, related to catabolic process were upregulated. Uh, there was uh, uh, many genes are needed to, to, to catabolize process that are uh, recycled to the grain. So these are also expected results. We analyze in, in detail the, the different system related to photosynthesis uh, and the results uh, uh, was very, very, very clear. In May, there are different genes that have uh, duplicates and in the nuclear genes uh, involved in photosynthesis, the downregulation was clear in most of the genes. If there are several copies, always downregulated. I saw the, the example of the genes of the photosynthesis like Harvard Hopeless 2, but uh, in, the, in the photosynthesis 1 core, photosynthesis 2 core occurs the same. However, it's also very interesting because in the chloroplastic genes uh, involved in photosynthesis, the, the situation was, was completely different. The, the, there was no changes with, 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 with senescence. There was other, other, uh, other ways, maybe a translation to control the, the decreasing of expression. There was also that I wanted to, to show you that is for the Calvin cycle and the C4 uh, path, the, 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 the regulation was, was different to what previously happened, that all copies change at the, in the same direction, the regulation, all down regulation. Here, only few of them were uh, down regulated, or many of them remain on changes. For, for each genes, one change, but other not. This is because there was some specialization uh, in the function, and some genes continued to be working uh, in photosynthesis, and other works in other function. 
this is um, I want to get in deep into this, but it's a very interesting subject in evolutionary and have also implication for reading, but I'm not going to this into more. That is not my specialty. Uh, I saw examples of, of, of uh, down regulation genes that was for the photosynthesis regarding the upregulated genes. Uh, one part that is uh, very important is the chlorophyll catabolic pathway. In this pathway, I, I expected that all genes were um, with duplicates upregulated, but only one of them was upregulated and other not. Uh, for example, SJ to to go to to were uh, regulated but other not these results are very uh, are in common to arabidopsis very similar results so uh, showing a, a common uh, common behavior in very different very uh, different species we analyze also the transcription factor the change of expression in transcription factors uh, there are some genes that were down regulated, they belong to, to many families. And also, some of them were upregulated. In the unregulated uh, group, there was two families with more members that were the, the NAC and the workers to, to have more uh, families, uh, more genes belongs to, to these families. We also analyze, because it's very relevant, the moment of change of expression of the genes. We classify the change of expression in early senescence, uh, change of expression at early senescence, and middle and late senescence. I, I, I intuitively think that the more important are the change in the early senescence, because after that it's like a cascade, but maybe the, 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 the change that changes at the, at, the, at the beginning maybe are the more important uh, uh, that contribute to the characteristic of the senescence. One of the early senescence was one of the genes in the catabolic uh, of the chlorophyll. And the, this is the, the graph of the chain of expression at 0, 15, 30 days, and was uh, really uh, have uh, the, the result that I expect change uh, much early in these lines, that that early senescence line, that in that line, the, that that a late senescence line. Regarding the, the transcription factors, uh, I, I, I detected eight transcription factors that change at early senescence. Half of them, four of them are for, for, for NAC, are NAC. So, although the NAC families and workers are maybe the more important in senescence, the, the NAC are acting in general before than the workers. And I, I, I get deep into this and I found a very uh, interesting result, at least for me. Here are the expression of all genes in red. This is the average expression of these genes at flowering, all genes. And in blue, the expression of only the NAC genes at flowering for each line. You see that in most of the lines, the expression at flowering of the NAC NAC genes is low compared with the average. This is what expected for genes for transcription factors that are important for senescence, but not for other processes of flowering. But I found also a very interesting result. For the early senescent lines, the expression of the NAC genes was already high at flowering, similar to the expression to the other genes. So maybe in that line, the expression started at flowering. I expected the, 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 the senescent to start after flowering, but maybe in that line start uh, at flowering. And there is an activation in this line of, of NACs as soon as at flowering. The, the, the four early NACs that I think that maybe are very relevant for, for the for all senescence, one of them was identified a very important novel state green the last year, confirming my intuition that was really important. 
I analyzed the, the promoters of the app-related genes, and I found two uh, motifs that was uh, very common to the app-related genes. The promoters of the app-related genes have uh, these two motifs. And these two motifs are uh, links are used by a transcription factor in Arabidopsis that is here, the NAM. And this transcription of one of the our upregulated NAX genes. So this confirms also the relevance of, of these this, this genes, the NAC, in the Senescence process. Uh, we are starting a study uh, to knock down the expression in the early service lines of the, the two early uh, NACs. This, was, this is doing by Dr. Arun Kumar. They, they are going to knock down the expression in this, in this line of two, two, two NACs. And I expected that uh, the, the, the lines have a delayed senescence, the early senescence. And uh, we are uh, made the, don, the knockdown of, of the genes and compare with the normal lines, the, the performance, how change the senescence and how there is pleiotropic effect in other traits. I think that could be a very interesting uh, work to be done. Then uh, I'm going to continue with the critical mapping. I already commented the, the how I did in the two population. I completed the, the, the work with uh, a magic uh, multiparental population an association mapping, and I'm now working also with the parental, the parental population. I'm going to explain briefly uh, the, 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 how I, I did that, that, that job. I use a multi a multiparental population because allows the study of multiple alleles, have high accuracy in cute location. We use high number to increase also the precision, and also we recombine to, to with the same objective. And was genotyped with, with a large number of, of SMIPs. The, the, the eight parents of the multiparental population uh, have high variability, and we are using to, 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 to map different traits. We detect a, a significant QTEL in chromosome 3, is that so here? We use the course and uh, identified in the RNA sec analysis, the, the core genes to uh, select candidate genes in the QTEL analysis. And we found a very interesting result. Really, the, the, that the SNPs that were significant in the QTEL analysis were within the coding region of one of the genes of the, of the, that was upregulated in the renal sex uh, study. And there was also congruency between the regulation early in the early selection lines and, uh, and late. So I would like to comment that I think that the two techniques, the, the, the studies of changing expression and the QTEL analysis to try to identify uh, genes, uh, identify or at least to, to, to discard genes uh, that are not possible to, 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 to be candidate genes. The, the final, uh, final co conclusion about the genes can be done by functional analysis, but for this it's important to have a reduced number of, of candidate genes. I, other, I did also I association mapping because allow higher precision in, in QTEL detection. You can study multiple alleles, multiple traits. The development of the population requires less time. These are advantages, have one disadvantage that have little power to detect low frequency alleles. So I don't say that one method is better than the other. I, I, I could say that two methods are complementary. We used uh, 200 timber lines provided by, by the USDA, USDA. The, 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 QT, the, the SNPs, the genotyping, was also provided uh, and what uh, available 
by the Cornell University, public available. You use physiological traits, uh, interchange of CO2 and agronomical. We detect uh, many QTLs, several QTLs for trade related for, for uh, physiology, for senescence. This is visual plant visual scale, visual scale of hash, and PA is for photosynthesis, and we detect a number of, of QTs. Uh, uh, the, the effects were, were uh, not large in general. We, don't, we didn't detect a QTL really of large effect, but we found a very interesting thing at molecular level that confirmed our results at, at, at phenotypic level. The, 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 the alleles for, for, for senescence, the alleles for uh, agronomic trace was always in the same direction for all markers, significant for senescence, except for one case. That is, the allele that increased this that increase the senescence that they that, that uh, make the senescence later also increase the grain yield, the fuel yield, and also the uh, increase the moisture. So it's a correspondence with with uh, phenotypic data. We identify uh, seven candidate genes in the coding region and one in the promoter region. Again, to 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 look for candidate genes, we use the core senescent genes in the RNA-seq experiment. Finally, uh, I, I, I told, explained the, 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 the work that I, I have already done. And now, uh, this summer, we started the evaluation of the parental population. I want to thank the, the company, uh, KWS, that developed the, the the double apply for the mapping population and genotype the, the mapping population. We are this summer we were we were and we are now we didn't finish yet to evaluating that uh, population that was also genotype. So we are going to 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 detect QTLs, uh, but improve the population because we have the same genotypes in different environments. So we can estimate the QTL uh, for environment interaction. The, the preliminary results, uh, I don't have uh, analyzed nothing. We are still taking data, but my preliminary in, uh, impression in the field was a large variation for the trade. So I think that could be very, very promising. We, we, uh, we, uh, we will obtain uh, promising results. I'm going to, to end this part of QTL analysis of the trade with the main results first. We don't find consistent in the location of the QTEL in the experiment. The, 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 the QTEL detected in the, in the magic, in the panel, in the F2 were not the same. Even uh, in the few, in the F2 populations were not the same in two of them. There was in general a small effects. And also the TET candidate genes were with very different function. So uh, the, this can be uh, a problem to use the QTEL detected in, in breeding because it's better to have large effect and work consistent. Maybe this point out to the use of uh, genomic selection. Uh, I'm just to finish uh, to, 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 to say something about the senescence. It's not like yield that you want it as much yield as possible. In senescence, it's a trait of adaptation. You need a uh, ideal uh, for each environment. So maybe the ideotype that I, 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 I think that for, for my results, I think that it's an ideotype is maintain a higher uh, photosynthesis as much time as possible and then a, a very quick uh, senescence to relocate the nutrients. Then I'm going to, to explain the, the the other part that is about their uh, plans. The, the, the lead material that is used in breeding has reduced variability because during the process of selection, a bottleneck has happened. 
uh, when there was selection, many variability was there, was uh, disappeared. Uh, really, uh, many even many local varieties have disappeared in, in, in elite breeding. So, so this is a thing that uh, happened in in general in in all crops. I have the experience that I'm going to tell and, and the knowledge we made, but it's similar to, 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 to all crops. The, the, the lead material that is used has re reduced variability. You see, however, there was more than 7 million of samples, so local varieties keep in their plants bank. I want to, to show a, a paper that, that is show that the breeder equation that related genetic, genetic gain with selection intensity, readability, additive variance, I conclude that the best way to increase uh, the, 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 the increase the genetic gain, the maintained genetic gain, is through the, the variance. Uh, this, this equation is for short term or middle term, but in the long term there are other theoretical studies that show the same. It's very important to maintain the genetic uh, gain, the, the, the increase in the variance, to, to have higher genetic variance. The, this author say that really increasing variance is the only way to feed the population by, by 2050. And also, point out at the uh, genetic uh, diversity that is in the gene banks. Uh, the loss of crop variability not only reduce the genetic variance and, and the, 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 the genetic gain in the long term, but also increase vulnerability, the increase the genetic erosion, increase the risk of a large scale negative effect. Uh, the local varieties, uh, again, reduce the vulnerability and can provide alleles to improve overall crop adaptation. This, uh, most of the breeders uh, are uh, aware of the great potential of the, of the gene banks. I, I put some examples here. In one paper, they, they call gold reserves. In other say that the artificial diversity is very clear that half are very important. But also there is a consensus between the breeder that there are there a factor but have not been used, or only has been used a small part of that diversity. I put I I keep here other examples saying the same. A short year plant is not sufficiently been used. Uh, uh, how uh, best use of the global genetic resources, uh, uh, utilization remains as real changes. So we have the, there the variability, but we are not using. And why is that? Uh, I think that there are two main reasons. First, there are a lot of accessions without sufficient characterization. So it's difficult for the breeder to choose the more appropriate. So the solution is to complete the characterization of the banks. And the other reason is that the local population have numerous uh, favorable alleles. So there is a gap between elite material and the local uh, varieties, the gap in yield. So the gap is so, there are so different, the, 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 the yield is so low compared with elite material that it's difficult to integrate in the, in the breeding programs. And the solution is breeding, are breeding programs. The problem of this, this program is the results are in the long term. It's difficult to, to obtain uh, results uh, at short term. I'm going to explain now the case of the maize variability that is where I, 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 I have experienced. For other crops, I think that the main conclusions are similar. Uh, the diversity of maize has been grouped in 350 races. And of all this variety, uh, variability in all races, only one single race contributes to the grow, grow in the United States, the, the race Corbel Dent. This the race has uh, uh, imagined a reduced variability compared with the 300 races. But only few varieties for the races. The races have many varieties, but 
not only the race, only this contributed mainly to the maize, but within this, within this race, only a few varieties. Really, Lancaster and Minnesota 15 are maybe three of the more important. But even, uh, even uh, within Reed, that is one of the most important, only one uh, synthetic citrus stock is one of the most important. All the reduction. The most common use heterotic pattern in temperate areas is a stiff stock for uh, multiply for cross to no stiff stock. But even within these uh, varieties, the, the commercial improved system that use and reside in the lines continuously reduce more the, the variability. So it seems that many elite lines derive only from few ancestral lines. This is in the uh, maize cultivated in, in US. In Europe, the, 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 the maize was uh, bring for, for was brought for, for, for America. If, uh, for 100 years ago, the, the maize is adapted now after years. And uh, ha we have uh, the, the three groups of year plants. The Northern Fleets in Northern and Central Europe came for Northern Fleets for Northern uh, US. Uh, in Southern Spain, there are um, varieties that are uh, similar to Caribbean or Southern varieties. And there was a, a group that that is mixed characteristic. Some authors say that could be hybridation between two groups. This is the group that we find in Europe. In Europe, uh, there was uh, other uh, authority package that is used that is correlated for European flint. The European flint in their lines come from European varieties, but only a few varieties have contributed to modern European lines. It's exactly the same that will happen with the US Jazz Plus. And it's again the same, the way of uh, the company recycling the lines, only few lines contributed mainly to the European fleet elite material. In the European fleet material then have low variability, even less than the American danger plants. We have a problem because have a reduced uh, variability, the European fleet plants using breed. Uh, we have uh, in Europe, the European fleet for hop and then uh, heterotic pattern. The heterotic pattern is a term used uh, a lot in, in maize breeding, maybe in other disciplines it's not so used. So I'm going to give uh, a small definition. It's just in breeding, many companies uh, have uh, or two groups of, of lines, and you know that the hybrids crossing line for the two groups are good. So they are uh, crossing always line within the groups and for evaluation crossing between groups. So uh, in addition, in our institute, uh, other uh, heterotic pattern was uh, identified. Varieties for southern, northern Spain crosses with varieties for southern Spain. Uh, With the aim of increasing the yield of that uh, local population, there was uh, a, it was started a recurrent selection program with a composite for northern Spanish material and southern Spanish group. The the, uh, the recurrent selection, I'm going, to, I'm not going to, to to give the details, but we have to self and crosses and evaluate the crosses. This program uh, was uh, continues to be done for 30 years. Uh, 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 each cycle of selection are for in our institute. We uh, did the same with other two population uh, to, to, to uh, with the one population with the European thing group and other for the Corbel then and we did also for 20 years an interpopulation recurrent selection program with a similar scheme. And the, the main point of this that I want to remark is we have four years to obtain one cycle of selection because we have to, to obtain the families, we have to, to evaluate to, to cross them, to evaluate 
to evaluate and recombine the, the selected families. So it was quite a slow process. The results quite quite good. Uh, here is the increase in yield of the of the cross in the two good programs are quite 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 good. If we consider increase of yield, if we consider that we was obtaining in 30 years, maybe it's not so efficient. If we consider per, per the time uh, the time factor, uh, the combining ability crosses with other materials was always good, was increased also, was effective. And even uh, for a practical point of view, pues here are comparison uh, in the two programs uh, of yield and moisture with some hybrid. I participate I, in this evaluation that was already done uh, 10 or 15 years ago. And the results are quite promising because some of, of, of our improved materials was relatively close to, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the breeding, to the hybrids. So, with promising. But the, the main question is the, the, is, is the, 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 the time that is required to, to obtain the results. The works and authors, Long and Reef, that propose a shift in the paradigm of exploitation of genetic results are proposed using genomic, genomic selection in pre-breeding. There was an understanding review uh, for, by Cross and other authors about genomic selection in plant breeding. And, uh, in the paper, have some understanding question, and I, I wanted to remark to them. And one question is, how can genomic selection accelerate the flow of fauval alleles from gene banks to breeding programs? And they ask about if we are ready to deploy genomic selection in pre-breeding programs. Before to come into this point, I'm going to give a brief introduction about what is genomic selection. Genomic selection uh, applied from the standard marker assisted selection in which use all markers for selection. The, 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 the question is like, really the, the results of marker assisted selections for traits that are highly quantitative, that are many of them, like yield, are highly quantitative, was not affected because the effect of all these was was small. So genomic selection was of marker for selection. Selection, genomic selection was first uh, used in, in animal breeding. And in 2007, a uh, paper for Red Bernardo proposed the use in, 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 in crops also. And since then, there was many papers with, uh, uh, working on, on genomic selection in, in crops. In genomic selection, there is a training population that is genotyping, the genotype and phenotype, the training population. And with this, we obtain a prediction equation that relates the genotype with the phenotype. That is, if we know the, the genotype of one individual, we can predict the phenotype. So in the target population, with only the genotype of the individuals, we know we have an idea of the value of the individuals, and we can select the best individuals without phenotyping. Uh, the question is how this prediction equation are good predicting the phenotyping. The predictive cap capacity or ability of genomic selection can be estimated by making the correlation between predictive values and phenotypic values. That is, we uh, develop the prediction equation and we phenotype some, some individuals and uh, obtain the, the, the prediction values. And uh, if good uh, ability of prediction should be very similar to the true values. This can be done to know if we are, uh, our selection based on genomic selection prediction would be good or not. There was a, a, a study that analyzed almost 1,000 parental mixed population, and, and the result was that the prediction was positive. So there are, there are the ability, the genomic equation to predict really uh, 
the, 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 the breeding values of the of the of the of the genotypes or so is can be used in, in, in programs. Uh, there is a point that there was some misunderstanding sometimes is that really the predictive capacity of phenotype selection for many traits could be or really is greater than genomics. So the phenotypic selection in the suspect could be better than the, the genomic selection. Then why would you use genomic selection? One of the main advantages, at least what I understand, is that it's able to shorten generation. For example, in a program you uh, use of phenotypic selection, you cross first with testers, then uh, one season, season, uh, season two, evaluate the crossing, season three, recombine the selected family, so you need three seasons. With genomic selection, you, 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 when the plant is small, you get the DNA, you, you genotype the DNA, and you cross, you select the families with the prediction equation. You have to get the DNA, obtain the genotyping, and make the equations, and you can, in only one season, select the best families and recombine only the selected ones. So, in one season, you obtain the same that in the other in three or four seasons. So, could be not effective if you consider uh, in, in terms of, uh, of pre uh, prediction of maybe uh, that, but the question is, is more effective if you consider the entire selection cycle. Other thing that we have to consider is that in principle, genotyping is cheaper than phenotyping and the abilities are also increasing a lot. The, the semi genotyping laboratory is able to process thousands of samples per week. Uh, Daniel Petroli uh, told me uh, this. So the genotyping is cheaper than phenotyping. I want to point it out something that maybe I don't know if other people is agree, but this, the, 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 I, I hear that the genotyping is cheaper for, 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 for many years, but maybe for larger group is true or I don't know, but maybe for, for a small group or public group, the price of genotyping can be still now, I think, and maybe we can discuss this with the panel, is even uh, high. And for me, sometimes could be for the half, the, 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 the resources for phenotyping, uh, the, the price of genotyping could be a limitation to change to genomic selection. Uh, there was uh, many, many papers showing the correlation between predicted and real values. But through a program showing the genomic selection, the number is quite reduced. It seems uh, that in, this is being used in private maize breeding. Uh, the, the way of using uh, is this is a very interesting figure that appeared in that paper. And is they use for discard uh, genotypes in the earliest stages. They, they, they genotype many, many individuals and discard by, with genomic selection, the words and continue. And when uh, at advanced child of selection, the phenotypic selection is more important. In public programs, the CMIX is um, one of the, 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 the institutions that has made a large form and have a very interesting paper that I recommend it. And, and uh, they conclude that really it's more efficient in maize program for that reason, the, the, the cycle, the cost of genotyping, and the, the way, and there's a recent paper that published, I think that even this, this in October, this, this, this same month, that say that uh, something similar to what is said in the, in the private sector that maybe uh, are used genomic selection in early stages to discard lines and so you can make the phenotyping in a few uh, in less individual more precise so is that conclusions similar to the to the conclusions that show the, the private use of the genomic selection what happened the genomic selection uh, in in the survey that i i I am more interested in that I am talking in using make the, 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 the resources of the gene banks available. Uh, there are needed to, to, to two things: characterization and prebreeding. Regarding the prebreeding, there are some papers that show that the predictive, the predictive ability in different species 
is greater than zero, that should, should, be, should be good. Uh, in maize, however, was less effective. The main problem of this is really the, the genomic selection is very effective within populations. When the prediction equation and the training uh, population is related to the target population, the genomic selection is very effective. But when the relationship between uh, the, the, the population, the target population, where you apply the, the, the equation and the, the, the population, where you, where you obtain the, the equation, are uh, far apart, are not related, the effectivity is decreasing very quickly. So uh, uh, I don't know if in a you know, blank is the population are uh, very diverse, are not related, maybe uh, could be a problem to develop effective uh, equation for prediction. This is also an interesting subject that is, I think, that people are studying very active nowadays. Re regarding prebreeding, pues, uh, by, by simulation, Gorjan proposed, uh, say that could be effective, uh, proposed to delay the cross to elite material, uh, correlation uh, studies show that could be really promising, but really there are not been used in preventing problems, as far as I know. Uh, I'm going to, 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 to talk, to finish my, my talk, uh, um, uh, to, to programs, to research, one that was uh, in collaboration with a group in, in Germany, and other that we are doing in our institution. Uh, in the, I, I, uh, there was a, a research line. The, the leader was Professor Shaw from the Technical University of Munich to, to use the, to, to, to revalorize, to give more value to the local addresses. Uh, first of all, uh, we uh, genotype 35 land races. And maybe one of the, the, the important things of the study, the more important things was we uh, analyze also the, the variation within, within, within land races. There are uh, other studies uh, that study only a few individuals per population, but we analyze the, the many individuals per land race. I, I have to remark that, that maize is an open population variety and, and it's an open population species, and, and there is uh, expected large variation within land races. The result was uh, that five land races capture many of the diversity. There is large variation within land races, and that European land races represent a unique uh, and diverse spectrum for a liquid variation. The conclusion regarding uh, pre-breeding uh, with genomic selection is that it's better to sampling first and select by phenotyping, select a few land races and, in, and start and do the, the improvement with a few selected land races. This is the main conclusion of, of this work. Then there was a project assessing the genomic and functional diversity of maize to improve quantitative traits. There was funding by the German government. The leader, as I say, was Professor Sean, that I collaborate. And uh, in that uh, in that in that, line or in that research, sorry, uh, there were three population, one for Spain and two for Central Europe, were selected based on the previous study and also some phenotyping. From this uh, population, uh, where a double diploid was obtained, uh, almost 1,000 double diploids. And there was phenotyping in three, seven environments and two years, and genotype with many markers. There, there was also the, the inbred lines was also test, cost, test crosses to evaluate also not only the lines per se, but test crosses. And the results that were published earlier show that, that libraries of double employees represent a valuable resource for genotic, genetic improvement of elite material. Uh, instead of working with the local land races that can, cannot, the individuals cannot be replicated, uh, the, the double haploids are kind of sources that represent the population but are easy to evaluate and have more value for the breeders. 
de, de libraries cover a large proportion of the genomic and genetic variants. Y the a result that was also interesting is uh, for one trait that we analyzed that is important in our uh, region, that is early vigor. Uh, the, the, the early vigor, uh, particularly in our uh, cold spring, uh, we have the, the, the trait, we find four alleles in the in the in the land races that was not in the lead material. But also it's interesting that some of them, the yield was relatively close, some of the of the tester with the double haploid to the commercial hybrid. So can be interesting for breeding. Finally, to, to finish, I'm going to, to introduce my current set. This is a, a line of research that I'm doing now. Uh, I am uh, I'm going to, to, to carry out, I am doing, sorry, I am doing now a, a, a pre-breeding uh, program using genomic selection. I'm going to comment briefly the difference with the, with the previous research. Uh, in the previous research, uh, they use double haploids that are homogeneous. I use S1 families, that is the families coming for self-pollination first pollinated a, a, a individual that are more heterogeneous. Uh, the, 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 the has the advantage that the, the evaluation are not so precise, but have the advantage that are cheap and that uh, the double employees have problems with the Spanish population. The, the, the Spanish population that we used in the previous study, uh, uh, we did, they didn't obtain many, many double haploids were recalcitrant, but uh, this one are easy to obtain in the Spanish population. Uh, in the three land races, I use a composite of land races, and I use four tester, step only one tester, to estimate the general combinability and estimation of specific combinability. Uh, I'm going to, to explain uh, a little about how I started the, 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 the program. Uh, in, in, the, the, in Europe, there was uh, many varieties and a core collection was, was, was developed uh, many years ago and with uh, almost 100 varieties that represent the variability of the whole population. The European core collection was evaluated for different traits and using the information of the evaluation of those, of those studies and, and increasing with some Spanish population for increasing more the variability, I developed a, a, a composite of 18 local varieties, local races, using several individuals per land race. I use uh, different uh, countries, uh, population for different countries, and represent different earliness and also the, the three group of rear plants that we have in Europe, Northern Flints, Intermediates, and, and uh, Southern Spain. So I, I use that variety. And then I'm going to comment a little about the, 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 the design. I have to say that in that project, I, 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 uh, I have the collaboration of Jose Crosa and, Pete, and Kevin Pisley uh, for 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 the for the for the theme it that helped me with the design of the, of the of the of the program and I'm going to uh, to help me also with the analysis. Uh, we develop 500 S1 families for the composite in Europe. As uh, I told, the main the main uh, heterotic group is European field for American core delt. So uh, we have interest in the performance of the inbred uh, crosses with that material. So I use four testers that represent uh, main groups within Corbel, and we crosses 100 families with, four, with the four testers and 100 families for each, specific for each one of the testers. So I obtained 800 uh, hybrids. I, uh, we did the crosses this summer. We continue, we, some of them filed this summer for unusual hot conditions. So we are completed in our winter nursery. And uh, the, the next two years, we are going to evaluate the, the test crosses. And we denotate the, the, the families in three locations at two years and develop the, 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 the equation. 
we have two more years of work only for developing the, the equation. Then we are going to carry out a selection program. My objective is to obtain two cycles per year using the, the, the prediction equation. So compare with the other, with the traditional program that is based on phenotypic, that are four cycles, four, uh, four years per cycle, we, I expect two cycles per year. You see the, the, the big difference. My, my main worry about this uh, are if the prices of genotyping uh, are, are, uh, are good, because I need a lot of genotyping, I need to find funding for, for, for that uh, pricing. And also, uh, and is my, my, my final uh, comment, is uh, one worry about genomic selection is uh, if when the, when, when the uh, in advanced cycles of selection, the prediction equation could be not so effective because the level frequency change and the leak in disequilibrium. So maybe, uh, there is not the prediction is low, and I have to 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 to, to make again the, the equation. Maybe with not so many individuals, but this can be a problem because uh, the block the equation is quite quite uh, complicated. Then I I explain my two first uh, my two main lines of research. A uh, general conclusion, I am consider myself as a, a, a breeder, and I, I think that it's very important to integrate different disciplines. So the collaboration, for example, that I have with uh, Dr. Kumar, I think that could be very important. Collaboration with uh, people that are expert in genomic selection with breeders can be very, very successful and very, very useful. So uh, I, 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 uh, I am using uh, tools in collaboration with other groups and integrate in my program. So uh, I, um, I try to, to give my talk quite, quite, uh, quite fast because in the beginning I, I expected two hours, but I now have to reduce to half an hour and a half. So I, 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 I finish. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bernardo, uh, for nicely explaining uh, molecular intricacies of stay green phenotype and also uh, discussing on use of genomic selection technologies in maize breeding programs. I'm sure your research findings has created a lot of interest among scientists and students, as is evident from a number of questions we have in the chat box. Uh, but due to time constraint, I think we will stick to top five, six questions. And uh, the remaining questions, I think we can take up through email. If somebody has some questions, they can drop an email. So I will take up questions one by one. The first question is, Please elucidate the principles of genomic selection as well as how the same varies according to the different species of a particular plant. So I think uh, Bernardo has already uh, explained the principle of genomic selection, but if Bernardo would like to say something on how we can use, how genomic selection varies according to the different species of a particular plant. Dr. Bernardo, okay. please. Yes, well, it's genomic selection really it's 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 quite simple in principle. Uh, really, the, the statistics could be complicated, but I, I apply already uh, genomic selection in in other trade, but I I am not explaining, and it really is like for me it's similar like a a regression a multi regression and and develop an equation. You have uh, one individual that is the, the, the yield, and you have this is the, 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 the dependent variable, and the independent variable are the alleles. So for each individual that you want to, to when you want to obtain the, the, the equation, you have uh, 
eh, the yield of the individual and the alleles. And this for, 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 many, for many individuals. Uh, and you see there are, for example, rigid regression and with matrix, you, you obtain a solution to that system and you have an, an equation. Uh, in that way, if you have uh, the information of the allele or individual, you know the, 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 the value. Uh, regarding the, the different traits and different, there are the, many papers working on that. It's a very area active area, and there are things. But in different uh, species, it's working well and different traits. Maybe the predictive value can change, but it's, it's working uh, quite well. The, the, the question sometimes to be effective or not. Maybe the key point are the linkage disequilibrium. This is very important. The linkage disequilibrium between the genes and the markers. Uh, uh, maybe one uh, disadvantage I, I would say because I all I wanted to see that I am, am a breeder and have a practical point of view and sometimes you see a theoretical paper and you see well it's very attractive and when you are trying to do you say wow it's complicated in that aspect maybe the, 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 to be uh, effective sometimes there are authors that say that the numbers of families that you have to evaluate is quite large. Maybe this is, is a problem that I found. For example, for me to, to evaluate 800 hybrids or that number that some people are using to have good precision equation could, could be complicated. But I think that can be used in other species without problem, yes. Thank you, Bernardo. The second question is, could you please advise us about which is the minimum necessary equipment for start doing genomic improvement in, for example, banana plants? Yes, it's, uh, well, it's, it's, it's a good question, but it's quite specific of, of the group. Really, it's difficult to, to answer. Uh, according to this recent paper for the CIMIT, I recommend it, highly recommend it, the paper from the CIMIT that have a very uh, theoretical uh, background. They are very, very good in, in, in the theoretical background, but complement with the practical background. That is very important for me. So they, they, they recommend to have all things done in a like automatic way, but this for a small groups is not so easy. In my case, what I, 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 I have done is I send uh, the, the, the samples to the CIMIT and they genotype the, the samples. But the pace of, 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 the, of the species, there are species that maybe it's not easy to find external service for genotyping. And one thing that is important that I also worry about the genomic selection, from a practical point of view, I, I, let's see when I started the cycles, is that you, you need to obtain the DNA and the equation very quickly before the, 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 the pollination. In animal plants, can be difficult because in maize, you need maybe for, for emerging to, to flowering. When you need the data, you need two or three months to be very quickly in trees species that maybe genomic selection is even more advantage because the cycles, the cultivation has, is, is even longer, the, the, the period of cultivation maybe is not critical. It's, it's, I am tol telling my, uh, my, my experience. Thank you. Uh, another question is, is the stay green trait also important in legume crops such as Faziolus and Vigna species? or it's useful in cereal crops like maize and sorghum only? Oof, no, this is a, it's a good question, but I'm not sure if I'm able to, to answer properly. I, 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 I focus more in, in, in cereals. The, the, the question of, 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 of the senescence is the, 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 the key point is really, uh, there are, uh, the, the key points are maybe three points. Uh, that are important, that are, um, that you have to consider in your own species, that are important or not. Yield, moisture, and recycling of nutrients. 
So there are the, the, the three points that are important. I don't know if this could be important. For example, one thing that is, I, I didn't comment, but I have also interesting results, is the stay green uh, genotypes are absorbing nutrients for longer. The nitrogen is absorbing for longer. Have uh, implication maybe in other species or other things. Okay. Uh, another question is, uh, uh, okay, so since from the French surveys, it's clear that by 2050, the world population will reach 10 billion approximately. So what do you suggest to maintain world food security in terms of genetics? Well, uh, the, the, yes, the, the, there is a, a good question. I, I would say something that for me, I, I didn't comment, but for me, I think that with the technology that we have now, we are able to dream in things that when I started my career 20 or 25 years ago, I, I was not able to dream or, or, or if I, I want to, to remark this, if you understand me. See that it's not able even to think about it. So the genomic selection, and now can be coupled with other techniques, the protocols that are now starting to, to be maximized in some crops, that is speed breeding. The speed breeding uh, are, means that uh, with high temperature and, and uh, many lights or many hours of light per day, you are able to have, I don't know, four or five cycles per year. If you don't have genomic selection, you cannot uh, carry out select the phenotypic uh, the, the phenotype of these individuals in that speed cycles is not relevant but if you have the genotypic uh, value that predict the phenotypic value you can merge genomic selection and speed uh, breeding so the 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 the, the possibilities of Genomic selection, for example, with speed breeding are amazing. So I think, uh, I, I want to comment some anecdote that I, 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 I watched this, this, this uh, week, a documentary by Atembor, the, the famous uh, from BBC, and, 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 and uh, was very dramatic about the problems of, of, the, of the food and also for environment, and the solution was to, to, to increase the, the, the yield. And also, it's, it's one solution that he gives is to, to try to, to change our diet for more vegetarian diet. So two things, make the diet more, more, eat more vegetables and increase the yield of the vegetables. It's important, not only that it's important for, for food security, but for also that is also interesting that there is also uh, interest in environmental consequences. So I think that increasing the yield with, with, uh, with is very important. Okay, thank you. So we will take up one final question now. Uh, the question is, in genomic selection, the prediction accuracy of genomic assisted breeding values varies from 0 0.3 to 0 0.6. But in conventional breeding, we can achieve up to 0 0.8 to 0 0.9. How ge genomic selection will suffice the situation? Okay, no, no. Well, really, I I, I think that uh, really the, the, you are predicting the, the, the reading value, the, the phenotype. So, so for, for me, the, the, the key point sometimes I, I think the important thing for me is not what is more 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 effective, the, the prediction ability is more effective or not. The, 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 the key point is the prediction equation of genomic selection are enough for, for, for being more, more effective in, ter in terms of time and in terms of, of cost. These are the two points that are important for me. Because really, uh, first, you, you are able to, to you, the selection, the phenotypic selection can only be done in the target environment, but the genomic selection you can, be, can be done in nurseries. So the, 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 the question is, you are able to have uh, more cycles. Uh, for example, I, 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 
uh, in the example of, of my, my research, we have uh, one uh, image in our region, we have one, one cycle, cycle per year in temperate areas. We have a nursery for fecundation, for pollination, nurseries winter in Chile, but we never, we cannot um, do evaluation there because the environment could be different for our environment. But with genomic selection, you can do also advanced cycles of selection there in other environments, even in, a, in, in, a, in any place with a field selection. So really, the, 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 for me, the, the important thing is not just that really the phenotypic selection has uh, such uh, prediction that is higher than the other, that I commented also that could be the, the case, but the advantage of certain generation. And also, but I, I that the cost of genotyping in principle, I had to, to say that I understand that the cost of the genotyping now is less than phenotyping, but for me, at the moment, it could be even more easy to, to do some phenotyping with the resources that I have, that is traditional, my institute have that uh, resources, that high and uh, fine funding to, to, to send to external service. But um, I, I think that this is the key point for me, not the, the prediction ability, but the shortening the, the cycles and the cost of genotyping compared with phenotyping. All right, Bernardo, thank you so much. Thank you for taking up the questions. And I would like to thank all the participants for presently listening to you. And there is a remark for you from Professor K.B. Peter. Uh, he says that it was a very informative talk and he would like to receive a copy of your presentation. So we have, I will keep in touch with Professor K.B. Peter and we will try to send, send your uh, presentation if you kindly permit us. And now I hand over the stage to organizers for further proceedings. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Arun Kumar. Well, that was extensively informative. Thank you very much, Dr. Arun Kumar and our speaker, Dr. Bernardo, for such a flawless conduction of events and for illuminating the subject to this extent. For the next event, I would again like to call upon Dr. Rupali for carrying forth the interview round. Thank you, thank you, Pratista. Well, thank you, Dr. Bernardo, for sharing your insightful knowledge about genomic selection in plants. No doubt it's a popular topic considering the big number of attendees, that's above 5,000 across the world. It is important to note that among these big numbers, 56% are postgraduate students. I believe their intention to join this webinar is to draw inspiration from research leaders with expertise in plant genomics. Thank you, Dr. Bernardo, for taking your time out to inspire our young researchers. Dr. Bernardo, please accept my thanks and gratitude. And on behalf of all the young youths out there who are designing a research career in plant genetics and genomics. Now, we are interested to hear about your life journey, which has led you to be a successful leader in plant genetics and genomics. I'm aware that the trainees and researchers worldwide want to hear from you about the life journey you have embarked on to be a successful leader in plant genomics in today's time. We will be happy if you can take questions about your life journey and advise us about training and resources available to update skills in plant genomics. So Dr. Bernardo, are you happy to take some questions? Okay, okay. thank you very much, yes. Yeah. Could you please talk us a little bit about your driving force to take up plant breeding and genomics as a career path? Oh, okay, okay. Yes, uh, I, I really... For me, the, the, the more important thing sometimes, maybe it's a thought that I only have, it's something personal, but I, I, I like to think uh, in, in nature or in anything like something like a whole. Sometimes even I don't like to classify the areas like phys physiology, genetics, uh, population genetics. For me, all things are integrated. So 
for me, uh, the, the, the more important things nowadays are a lot more productive uh, disciplines. So I think that uh, maybe uh, you have to, to choose the, 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 the area that you are more, that like more, but with a, a, a knowledge of other areas, not close to, to a small areas. Even I, if I, uh, you see the, 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 the history of, of many discoveries, sometimes was for people from other areas. So the integration is important. I think that the, the discovery of the, the, the cabin cycle was a, a physics. Or from come from physics. So for, for me, it's, 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 it's very important. So I, I, I have interest in quantitative genetics, in the, in, the, in, the, in the principles of quantitative genetics, but <coughs> I was using along my career the techniques when I, I, I see that was useful for my objective. In that aspect, I would like also to comment that uh, maybe I, I, I feel that uh, it's important to, to, to use the, the techniques adequate to your objective, not on the contrary, because sometimes, because the scientists have also pressure to police, are, we are using sometimes fashionable th fashionable techniques or something. For me, it's the contrary. I don't use, for example, uh, the RNA sec because it's fashionable. I, I use for, for a sec, uh, first. I'm go, I want. I want to try to explain. Sorry. Uh, the, the, I, I wanted to use a real sec. I'm going to, to try to find how to integrate in my research. No, it's the contrary. If I study senescence, the, the RNA sec is a very powerful technique. I try to, to use. Not the contrary. I, I try to explain a, a, a little, is, I don't know if I answer your question, but if you have more specific, I can focus more on something more specific. Yeah, so in total, I can say it involves the integration of multiple disciplines and people who are bored with doing monotonous work can aim at, can always aim at these fields because uh, I'm also a researcher in the same field. And I realized that uh, we, we do have to integrate various fields, not just biology. So yeah, it's indeed an inspirational one. So which brings me to my next question. Could you please tell us about the challenges in plant genomics? Okay. Uh, I'm going to, to say one thing that I, 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 I read two years ago a paper saying something so uh, like uh, a breeder i wanted very much to collaborate with people from genomic for me it's very 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 important for example dr kumar i think that with the functional analysis of that this for me uh, i'm not able to do it i have not the background but with that I, it was very important so I read a paper two years ago about the use of genomic editing in, in, in breeding, in breeding for quantitative traits. And the, the, the paper showed theoretically that uh, genome editing, uh, the question of genome editing could be, could be good for, for traits con, uh, that are, uh, if you find a large crude tail, but in the traits that I usually use that are quantitative, many are quantitative, the effects are so small, small that genomic editing is not so effective for a practical point of view. But that paper shows that genome editing, you can also modify the recombination, and the recombination is key for selection. So if someone uh, that is here in this is uh, interesting, really, I would like to start a, a, a program of selection using recombination uh, and using genome editing. And I think that the, 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 the numbers are maybe 10% or very, very high difference using that techniques. And I, I like to commend uh, your answer this, this because I think it would be a very uh, good uh, way in the future to use uh, genomic editing in, in plant breeding for qualitative traits uh, to, to know the, the function, to generate more alleles, but also in quantitative genetics, uh, modifying the, the recombination 
Ok. Hello. Ok, do you have other question? Hello. Hello, do you hear me? Hello. 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 Hello, can you hear me? Uh, sorry for the technical issue. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your response. Hello. Hello. Uh, yes, madam, you are audible. Yes, yes. Okay. My next question is for a plant researcher, which is the pathway to achieve? What are the pathways to achieve the skill sets in plant breeding with genomic selection? Uh, where we expect it to achieve? Sorry. Yeah, what are the pathways? What are the pathways to achieve skill sets in plant breeding with genomics? As I'm aware, that it, it requires additional skill sets like machine learning, statistical modeling, and Oof. computational no, no, biology. No. Ah, okay, okay. It's, it's, a, yeah. it's, a, it's a good question. Okay. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I, I, I it maybe it's a statistician uh, hear me, they, they don't like that. But maybe the, I, I think that there are uh, simple models for apply genomic selection that are quite easy to apply. Uh, I, for example, based on the papers and uh, the book of Res Bernardo, you can apply simple models of, uh, and just I apply that model that I am not expert in statistics. Just uh, by multiplying matrix in a very simple way, you obtain, and I, I, I could just multiply, and there are software, but just multiplying, multiplying, uh, multiplying matrix, you, you obtain a good result of genomic selection. The question is, there are studies uh, about Bayesian uh, and that kind of things, that say, some of them that say that are more effective, but there were others that say that the simple models that are just the, the rigid are quite, quite, quite effective. Uh, the question about that is, is again, the integration. Uh, uh, one thing that I, 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 I apply the genomic selection in, my, in a previous program that I don't, I have already results, but it's about other trade that I didn't uh, comment. Uh, and, and I apply a simple model that is very simple to apply. For the pre-breeding, uh, I, I contacted and I am collaborating with Jose Crosa, that is an expert in statistics. The, 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 the thing that uh, I, I see these days, and I, I told you, is my experience, maybe I, uh, other people don't agree with me, is this so, is uh, the, the, like pre-breeder is like an integrator of different things. The statistics, when I started, maybe regression and ANOVA was that, but yeah. <laughs> advanced so quickly that you cannot compete with a person that has a background in statistics and works only in statistics. So sure. again, I, I am going to have the collaboration and expert in statistics. In the model, the Bayesian is seen that is quite similar to, to, to the, to the Ridger uh, or the Bloop uh, model uh, using Bloop, but the, the, the group of the CIMIT are integrating also um, in interaction with environment that could be uh, quite good in the models. Uh, also, I, I could say to, to end the, the question that sometimes I have a problem with the models. If the models are so complicated that I don't understand, I, 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 at least the, 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 the basis of the model, the, the biological significance, I don't like to use because I get lost with numbers. I don't know if I yeah. have sense. Okay, thank you for sharing your views on this. Okay. Uh, could you broadly tell us about uh, future career prospects in plant genomics? Oof, well, I, I think that the, the future is, 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 is a subject that is progressing so quickly and no, no, this is, 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 is a study that is, is, is very important. Uh, people uh, um, specialize in, in, in genomics are, are needed, but I, I told you one thing. I think, at least in Spain, that I think that I have that impression 
that the, the last wanted training person and with a bad, a bad background in that subject. And even the, the, the one thing that the, 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 that people have that is able to work in, in many things, not only in, in, in plant breeding, because the techniques of genome can be used in animal breeding, human genetics, in anything. So I think that is a, a part that is, is have a future uh, for sure. Okay. Okay, thank you for sharing your views on this. Okay, you're As you rightly said, Dr. Bernardo, uh, during your talk that with rapid increase in population and climate change, we need rapid solutions. And genomic selection in crop plants will improve the pace of breeding. And the future careers in this direction is promising. Thank you very much for your responses. I'm sure the audiences who are students, researchers, and budding scientists have drawn enough inspiration to choose plant breeding and gen genomics as their career path. Thank you again for inspire us, inspiring us. Over to you, Pratista. Thank you very much, ma'am. Truly an amazing interaction to have waited upon. Thank you, Dr. Rupali, for executing this interview that most certainly was quite intriguing. Now, that was a mind-blowing session we had. So thanks a lot. Everyone's been a brilliant audience. And I would also like to acknowledge the efforts put in by the core support and the core subject teams, the panelists, and the speaker, of course, Dr. Rupali, and all my fellow workers who contributed to make this event a success. Reaching the end of this, I would like to clarify the process of attaining the certification for the same. A feedback and certification link has been shared in the chat box and the YouTube comment box as well. You're all kindly requested to go on to the same, fill it up, register yourselves, and thereafter, within a slot of 48 hours, your certificates will be shared accordingly. And if there is some error and you do not receive your certificate, after two days' time, kindly visit our official website, which is www.plantgenomia.com. Please note that the link is valid only for five minutes. With this, I would like to request Dr. Preeti to take over and propose a vote of thanks. Over to you, ma'am. Can we please have yes, you, Dr. Before Pritti? that, I want to speak. Yes, yes. Before that, I want to take one minute. Like yes. the certificate application link will be active for two hours as there are more participants here having, and we are receiving the link. Uh, the link is not working. The comments are receiving like that. So the link will be active for two hours, and you can fill the form very patiently. So okay. Thank you very much, sir. So just as sir announced, the link will be active for next two hours and you can patiently fill it up. And now I would again like to call out Dr. Preeti to take over and propose a vote of thanks. Yeah, thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, madam. Yes. Yes, yes. Thank you. So hello, everyone. Namaskar to all. Uh, this is Dr. Preeti Dave, scientist food and nutrition from Datiwada Agricultural University. So, uh, being a part of this team webinar, I'm here to extend our thankfulness to one and all uh, who has made their efforts, who has put their effort to make this uh, today's webinar very successful. So, first of all, uh, I would like to express my humble thanks to uh, our honorable chief guest, Dr. K. V. Peter, sir. Uh, former Vice Chancellor, Kerala Agricultural University, for his uh, inauguration of the webinar. Uh, Dr. K. V. Peterson said very thoughtful things uh, about combating global hunger. We feel fortunate enough to have such an eminent personality with us today. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us and especially to be with us in this entire webinar. Thank you so much, sir. Now I would like to express my uh, humble thanks to our uh, um, speaker, today's speaker, Dr. Bernardo Ordas, uh, a research scientist from Spanish National Research Council uh, for his wonderful presentation. Uh, Dr. Bernardo, uh, I must say that the PowerPoint presentation uh, 
uh, was very much in detail and it was full of scientific information with lots of graphics so that was really very interesting to see all those graphics and to look at the slides actually and uh, it was again in uh, very much lucid language so thank you so much sir and uh, also a big thanks from us for answering all the questions which our participants has raised uh, to show the path in future where we can lead with the subject uh, that was also very informative and uh, you know insightful and then thank you very much for that now uh, i would like to thank the, our panelist dr arun kumar sir he is a senior scientist at csr r ihbt palampur uh, sir thank you very much for handling the entire session and also the question answer session in such a nice way and thanks for being with us uh, i also would like to extend my thanks to honorable dr k p vishwanathan sir uh, he is a vice chancellor at uh, mahatma phule krishi vidyapeeth rahori Uh, sir has sent us a very uh, encouraging uh, forwarding and uh, for the today's webinar so sir thank you very much for that now i would like to extend my thankfulness to dr p a sable sir scientist horticulture uh, sardar krishnagar datiwada agriculture university for sharing his views on plant genomia each is very nicely mentioned the role of plant genomia and and the knowledge sharing journey thank you sir uh, for uh, your spending the time with us thank you uh, i am also thankful to uh, the team webinar uh, dr rupali dr tanushri and dr pratishtha uh, this ladies needs for her, her a big thanks for hosting the webinar in very efficient way and uh, i would like to thank uh, mr alamuru uh, krishna chaitanya uh, founder of plant genomia uh, this man needs a very special and big thanks for bringing this innovative platform for us all for all those who, who are you know interested in uh, uh, online uh, knowledge sharing as well as uh, learning and teaching so thank you this is an amazing platform it it is a wonderful experience for all of us uh, so thank you uh, chaitanya for bringing a galaxy of eminent personalities of different fields in today's event thank you uh, all the subject specialist team and all the core support team without your support this webinar uh, was not possible so i'm really thankful to you all of you and last but not the least i am really thankful for all our enthusiastic participants uh, who have joined us since last few hours uh, without uh, whose support this uh, event would never had been such a successful so thank you all thank you so much have a good day yeah chaitanya uh, so i am uh, you can continue for the next yes yes thank you for joining everyone in this wonderful event uh, so i think we can end the session with the permission of uh, all the subject specialist team with the chief guest and everyone so i declare that webinar is complete by now okay thank you Thank you, KV Peter sir, once again for attending our session from beginning to ending. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, thank you Dr. Bernardo sir. Doctor, Doctor, thank you, Dr. Arun Kumar sir. Uh, you have handled really the session very smooth chair by chairing. It was very fantastic thank with you. Thank you. And I thank Dr. Pratik Sable sir, who is a scientist in horticulture, Dantiwada Krishi, uh, Dantiwada Agriculture University, Gujarat. for giving his valuable views on plant genomia i thank all the subject thank specialist you. team and i thank all the core support team members for supporting me all day in and day out for bringing this platform virtually here thank you one and all i think we can close the session here and we can end the meeting for all yes yes all the certificate of participation uh, will be sent uh, in within two days you can collect the certificates from the website uh, the drive link of the certification applications and uh, the, all the 
names of the certificates will be uploaded in the website. So I request you all to keep updated with the website and all the certifications uh, process will be sent via email also so that no, no need to panic with the, all this. So I think we are end with here. So I am ending the session for all. Thank you one and all once again.